Hey guys, this is Gino, and today I'm gonna present you a Temple Mage guy. I recently brings Temple Mage to uh, recent tournaments, uh, including the Niso 2015. This deck is very spell centric, where we have a lot of spells in the deck. So let's take a closer look to the deck. In this version uh, of Temple Mage, we have actually 15 spells. And um, this deck is very spell centric, as I said before. And there are m many synergy between the spells and the minions. Say, so first of all, we have Mana Worm, which gains uh, plus one attack whenever you cast a spell. And um, we have Sorcerer's Apprentice, where we our spells cost one less. So that's a very good uh, tempo gain uh, using multiple spells with the Sorcerer's Apprentice. In the next one, we have Flame Worker, where when you cast a spell, it randomly deals 2 damage amongst the enemy. Uh, this is very good board clear removals, and as well as damage to face if you really need it to end the game. And uh, we have Asterisk, with the, uh, with the spell power, we can deal more damage with our, with our spells. Of course, the Archmage Antonidas. This is a really strong minion where you can play spells and gain a fireball which uh, gives you more power and card advantage in the late game. So, uh, what are the matchups of this deck? I think the uh, good matchups of this deck is Druid, uh, Warrior and Paladin. And the bad matchups is usually Zhu, Face Hunter and Reno, or maybe some uh, Shaman as well. Okay, um... Without further ado, let's start from uh, let's play some games. I will fight with honor. You asked for it. Okay, in the mulligan phase, I think we want to keep uh, some low cost spells and minions, and especially against paladin, uh, arcane missiles is very good against uh, his. Uh, silver hand recruit so we we're gonna keep that oh by the way because I found that the my uh, was muted when I record this game so that I have to do it afterwards and in this turn we're gonna play uh, mana worm so yeah we we're probably gonna play mana worm uh, the reason of this is because um, if we coin out Mad Scientist this turn, we probably need to play uh, Mana Worm and and uh, we're not sure we're gonna play Arcane Missiles next turn. So if he doesn't play anything, uh, we're gonna save Arcane Missiles for turn three when he play Must of Battle. And then this turn we can play uh, Mad Scientist. We just go ahead and ignore the uh, Haunted Creeper. Probably no way to, for him to deal with the uh, mana room next turn. Because he only have 2 mana. I don't know, 3 mana. Never tell. Even if he must have barely can only kill the Bat Sanders. Okay, now we're gonna try if this uh, if this secret is advantage, redemption, uh, or get down. So the secret is neither of those. So uh, most it is most likely a uh, competitive spirit. So we probably just the best move here is to play frostbolt and then arcane missiles. And then we are going now we have a 3-3 three, three mana worm and then we go ahead and hit face with that. It recreated a lot of pressure to him, so he has to find a way to answer this. And again he play um the pilot straight on curve.
we have two plays here. One thing, uh, one play is that to coin out the as Drake, but this way he can probably uh, just trade efficiently with his pilot trader to our as Drake or mana worm. So maybe that's not very good. The other play is to uh, like Frostbow, Mad Scientist, and Mirror Image. Let's frostbow and see what he gets. He gets three, two, ton, so we're gonna trade that sinus into that. <coughs> now we want probably want to play um, Even if he consecrate here, he cannot kill the uh, mana worm. So prob it, it is probably good for us. Now, so he has four dudes on the board. In this situation, if we trade our mass scientist, if we kill one of these dudes with our mass scientist, he cannot. He cannot kill uh, our mass scientist and mana worm in the next turn. He cannot kill them both. So we we'll kill one of his dudes with a mass scientist and then go face with a mana worm. Notice that the mana worm is already 6 3, so it's really big. He really wants to kill that mana worm before it's too late. Actually, we ha already have tons of damage. We get, get tons of damage from the mana worm already. So, staying ahead with the mana worm is a very huge advantage for a temple mage. Mm. Again, stacks that doesn't have very good AoEs. Decided to play his mysterious challenger, and then we have the <coughs> we have our mysterious challenger with the mirror image. But unfortunately, we got our mirror entity. So let's think about how we can trade here. It's probably a noble sacrifice, so we go ahead and sacrifice our. Scientists, and we need to think about how to trade here to get very efficient. If we could just go phase, he probably will trade with the um, he would trade his mysterious challenger into our Azure Drake and then use his phase. Actually, he can actually go, we can go, we can just go phase. But we, but I decided to um, kill his five four with the uh, Myst mysterious challenger. It still gives us six six, six one though. <coughs> and if he doesn't have, if he doesn't have a consecration here, we probably win. And yeah, that's it. That's the that's the first game. The second game is against a uh, warrior. This one is actually a patron warrior, so we're unfavored in this matchup. The way we're gonna win this game is try to give him 
early pressure with uh, low, uh, with Mindworm, Matt Sanders, things like that. Try to establish the board as early as we can because when he go out of control with the patron, we cannot catch up. Not with this deck, especially when we don't play Flame Strike. Even if you have Flame Strike in your deck, um, if you don't draw it, or you can only clear one patron's patron swarm with the flame strike. If he established another a second patron swarm, you're probably dead anyway. So now we see um, Finley here, which makes us think that it's probably a patron warrior, because because <clears throat> only because only patron warrior runs Finley, right? And here we can probably play Mirror Image and then Frostbolt is friendly, but I think it's it is not so good to do so. Because it only has established a 1 3 and a 3 2. Actually, this 0 0 2 doesn't count. Doesn't count the pressure to this warrior. So maybe we just go ahead and draw. Arcane Intellect and play Arcane Intellect Acclay of Pain with the Battle Rage. Now we draw Sorcerer Apprentice. This is a very good turn to uh, to catch up from the game because we can play Sorcerer Apprentice. We can play Frostbolt. We can play Double Frost Frostbolt if we want, <clears throat> and play Mirror Image to to prevent him from killing the uh, Sorcerer Apprentice. Crossbow this and then mirror image and then buff our saucer um, because in four three hopefully it doesn't die next turn. We decide not to frostbow the friendly because probably doesn't worth it. Unfortunately, he finds a way to use the board. I mean, at least kill the. Uh, kill our saucer apprentice. So now we kill the Finley with our second Frostbow. And we only have a mirror entity in play. That is a very weak turn for us. And he pr he can probably play something like Armor Smith. Just to proc our mirror entity, just give us some garbage. Yeah. And now we don't have a ever have a good way good way to deal with the Arclan of Pain. 
that's really sad for us. But still, we, I think we're still just gonna fireball this thing, the thing. So next turn we can play Doctor Room. Hopefully it doesn't have anything. Unfortunately, he's gonna coin out his Doctor Boom. And he doesn't have much thing to do. Doctor Boom is not a good thing, uh, not, a, not an easy thing to deal with. The best play here is just to play a Doctor Boom in return. And hope our Boom's RNG are better than this. Played the Frogging Berserker. And this bomb RNG is not enough. It doesn't kill the it doesn't kill the Frogging Berserker. It even gives him more cards to draw. Battle Rage. Now it gives him the opportunity of using his <coughs> execute without using the without trading the his second boom bots. We're not gonna play Archmage here just to get one fire buff out of the arcane missiles. <clears throat> and it looks like we have to uh, kill the uh, Frothing Berserker. We want to kill the Frothing Berserker over his Doctor because the Frothing Berserker is 9 power. One thing about this matchup is that he has quite a lot of quite a lot of useless minion to give you give it to the mirror entity. One thing about the unstable goal is that it only gives us him more patrons, more armors. But at the same time, it also ruins your board. This is really bad for us. He already gave us. An armor smith and uh, and an unstable portal. Now we can only YOLO it and see if we can kill this doctor. Hopefully, he doesn't have an answer for medicine. He can lose this RNG. So there's not not much we can do here. So we just concentrate.
shall be mine. You asked for it. Now this game is played against a warlock. I mentioned that the zoo lock is not a very good matchup for um, for temple mage because you cannot control which which target you want to kill. Sometimes you just unfortunately you break his eggs. Which is very bad for us. Now, we have a lot of spell in our hand currently, but sometimes you do have this starting hand. But one thing in mind that the uh, Temple Mage has a very good comeback mechanism with like uh, uh, Flame Wicker. Plus the Sorcerer Apprentice, where you can use a lot of spells and uh, clear the board with uh, Flame Wicker. <clears throat> and we have a lot of a lot of one one mana spells, so you can use as many as you can if you have them in your hand. The Twilight Drake. The way we're gonna deal with this twi Twilight Drake is, well, you can, you can probably Frostbow and then Arcane Missiles, Arcane Blast it and then pay it to kill it. But this, this is just too wasteful. We probably wanna just put down our Sorcerer Apprentice and then, and hopefully you can play as Drake. An Arcane Blast to kill the uh, Twilight Drake because the Arcane Blast with the um, Twilight Drake, I mean, as Drake is 4 damage instead of 2. So that's a very good synergy. Now, do we want to use our Arcane Missiles here? We probably want to use because if next turn he plays another minion. Like a, a sludge voucher, we probably cannot kill the Twilight Drake. <laughs> Drop on this, and that's fine. Now we're gonna play the Azure Drake. Point into the Arcane Blast has planted. Okay, decide to do this and I'll which is, which is, literally the worst mini we could get from the, from a handlock. <laughs> he probably wanted to tap first before playing any cards, but yeah, that's, whatever. Notice that we don't want to waste our Frostbow oil. Uh, on the Acidic Swarm was because we want, we want to save some burst against a Handlock. So we probably want to just trade the all in these three tiers. And do we want to play the uh, Mirror Image? Or we can play the. Uh, I think it's positive. I think it's negative. You just want to play. Um, I guess we just want to play mirror image for the damage from uh, Flame Maker. And now, what can he do? He probably has an AOE. Yeah, Hellfire. And, uh, 
maybe you wanna use a smaller core as well. And again, he, he gives a he gives us another owl. <laughs> we got double owl with mirror entity this game. <laughs> That's very sad. Because against Handlock, you usually get something very cool, right? right? But never mind, we're gonna frostbolt his face and end this game. And that's it, that's the third game of Temple Mage. Uh, and I think this sum it up and the matchups, uh, I mean, the play test of this deck. And that's it. Okay, and so I'm Gino, and I hope you liked this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and follow my Facebook and Twitter. So I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.